I would like to begin today by asking you a favor. If at any point Haley Houston Odlazil told you that she loves you, would you please raise your hand high and keep it up for me? Yeah, keep those hands up. Everybody take a look around. You see Haley's love, it's surrounding us even right now. And that's what makes today a beautiful morning. Put your hands down. It is a beautiful morning, but that's also our task today. Beautiful morning. To beautifully mourn a life well lived. My name is Andy Luton. I'm one of Haley's cousins. I'll be guiding us through the service today. And if I have any encouragement to offer you, any wisdom to impart upon you, it would be this. Be honest with yourself today. Be honest with your emotions today. If you need to feel something, you can feel it here. If you need to cry, you can cry here. We already checked with the church. They have flood insurance. And yeah, you can laugh here today. You can smile here today. You can celebrate here today because there is more to say about Haley's life than to only focus on the terrible disease that ended it. So we celebrate her whole life today. We celebrate it together. We will laugh together. We will cry together. We will smile together. And together, we will make this a beautiful morning. The only way to continue from this point is to set this service on a foundation of faith in Jesus Christ. To do that, I would like to invite Pastor Chris Shook, a very dear friend of Haley's and pastor here at Woodlands Church. Good morning. If you do Haley, it will not surprise you that she actually planned this service. She planned it down to every detail, unable to change some of the physical realities that were going on for her. She never hesitated to step into what she could change and what she could influence. And it was several months ago that Haley showed up at my house with a piece of paper, and she had written all over it, in her handwriting and scribbled, and at the top it said, my funeral. And she had planned every detail just the way she wanted it to go. See, she had a very clear message that she wanted you to hear. And so she planned the speakers, the music, absolutely everything, right down to the food she wanted her family to eat afterwards, which was cheese pizza, thin crust, so she has had such a love and a joy for life. And she wanted today to be a celebration more than anything else. Not a goodbye, but we'll miss you until we see you again. See, we will see Haley again. You see, Haley's hope was in heaven. And today, though our hearts ache with missing her, we're celebrating that Haley's hope is now her reality. Facing death made Haley intensely aware of being alive. She cherished every single day. Every day was valuable to her. Despite the pain that went with it, she counted every day a joy because it meant there was one more opportunity to love, to love people. And I think, if we're honest, that most of us, as we followed Haley's journey, at some point found ourselves envious actually envious of Haley, because we thought, oh, wow, what would it be like to live with that kind of clarity about what's important and what's not? We thought we were watching someone die, but it turns out we were actually watching someone really live. We weren't watching Haley die. We were watching her actually grab hold of life and live it. Haley told me, if I could snap my fingers and take away cancer, Absolutely, I would. You bet I would. But I would never want to take away what I have learned through it. Because of cancer, she said, I have learned that every single day is a gift. And that the stuff most people waste their lives on, 
is totally worthless. She said, cancer taught me what is important. I know what's important, and it's only because of this journey that I know. I could have lived to be a lot older without it, but I wouldn't have actually lived. I never would have known what real life and real loving is all about. And that was Haley's hope for you. So here's what she asked me to tell you. There's two things. The first is appreciate your life. Appreciate this gift of life that God has given you. As Andy said, she wanted you to get in the habit of saying, I love you to those that you love, just like she did. She wanted you to know that you should celebrate every chance you get. Celebrate the little things. I take any excuse for a party. She wanted you to know that you should have conversations about real stuff and hard stuff, not just the everyday surface level things that we spend 95% of our time talking about. She wanted me to let you know that we should all stop judging everybody, judging everybody else. She said there were so many times that she experienced this because it's, Haley's so beautiful, and many times she didn't look sick even though she really was very sick. And she recounted to me one time, she came over to my house one time after she had just been out running errands with Weston, and she said, I parked in the handicapped parking because I just had chemo and I feel horrible. But I was, after I put Weston in his car seat, a woman next to me, you know, she, apparently she thought Haley looks great and she just used this handicapped parking place for no good reason, just because it was convenient. And a lady next to me chewed me out for parking in that place. And Haley had a few choice words for her. <laughs> and I said, that is awesome, way to go. And it's a great reminder, isn't it, that we don't know what's going on in everyone else's life. Everybody has a hidden hurt. And she wanted me to remind you of that today. And she also wanted me to tell you this. She said, I wish everyone would stop obsessing about what their body looks like. Because just be thankful you have one. And use it to love people. And also, she said that no one really cares what you look like in a bathing suit except for yourself. So get over it. And she also wanted you to know that you should toss out your big bucket list. All the big grand things that you want to do. Haley had one too to start with. And she told me, she actually read it off to me. And it was all these, all these grand uh, places mostly that she wanted to go. Big things she wanted to do. See the northern lights, stuff like that. And I said, wait a minute. After she read it, I said, Haley, I have seen those same Instagram posts. And so wait a minute, what's your real bucket list? And we laughed about that. And then she said, yeah, here it is. I'll tell you what my real bucket list is. I want to make an after-school snack for my son. I want to sit on the floor and play with him all day long. I want to go out on a real date with my husband. And she said, it turns out these are the real things that matter. Let them know. She said, let everybody know that the stuff that we so often focus our lives on isn't what counts. She wants you to know that when you die, you won't care how much money you have. All you'll care about is the people you love and focus on that. And then the second thing Haley wanted me to tell you was this. You guys, be ready to join me in heaven someday. She wants you to be ready to join her. You see, Haley had placed all her hope in Jesus. And she said, when I think of Jesus and what he did for me on the cross, if he can go through that, I can go through this. Haley asked for her favorite song to be played today for you. She wanted you to hear the words and the message. Our sons, Josh and Stephen, wrote it after Josh's son went to be with the Lord. It's a song written from a place of deep honesty and great hope. You see, because of Jesus, we have no less days to spend with Haley. No less days. We have eternity to spend in heaven with Jesus and with Haley. And she wanted you to know that she knew her rescue was coming, that she was going to be raised to life again. Haley today is more alive than ever before. 
And she wanted you to know that someday you can be too. So please listen to the words of this song as Haley wanted you to have the message. I am broken Death is all around Where I stand, Lord It looks like you let me down But I am nothing And you are just You make treasure out of dust You know each hurt I hide and every hope unspoken by your word I write. Oh, I won't live in fear, throwing the days away. You restore my wasted years. I give you my wasted ears oh, I want answers and I'm not alone there's still one thing I know this world is not my home Cause I can we hope for something more Unless it's something we made for You know each hurt I hide And every hope unspoken By your word I write Oh Lord, I give you my wasted years. Our rescue is coming these days. The hope that was stolen is now raised to light. Our rescue is coming. These dead bones will rise. The hope that stolen is now raised to light you know each hurt I hide and every hope unspoken by you word I write so
Thank you, Josh, Stephen, Pastor Shook. Haley was passionate about her family. She loved her family. Love's a verb. She, she, she loved her family. And it was, she was proud of her family. It wasn't just love. She was proud of her family. It wasn't long after you met Haley or even in the same moment that you would meet Taylor and Weston. And maybe in that same moment, you would meet Haley's sister, Amanda, her husband, Dominic, and her children, Layla and Landon. And if you were lucky, you got to meet two people who are very special to me, uh, Ed and Simone Houston, Haley's parents. And if you were really, really lucky, sometimes you even got to meet some of her extended family. Here's, here's what I loved about Haley, though. She wanted her friends to know her family. She wanted her family to know her friends. She wanted her friends to know her other friends. She wanted everybody to know everybody so everybody could love everybody. And I got to see that played out a week ago Friday, in the morning that she passed. I was sitting at their house. I was in the, in the backyard. I was sitting on uh, some, one of the benches there. And you see people come in in various stages of grief because that was a tough day. Everybody was crying. They were hugging. They were trying to comfort each other. And then something very curious happened. Something very beautiful happened. Those tears, those hugs, they turned to stories. Do you remember the time that Haley did this? Do you remember the time that we went to this place? Do you remember the time we laughed about something she said? And that brought comfort in that moment. And it, it helped me realize something. I'm going to say it to you today, but every eye on me, okay? Haley's story does not end today. Haley's story will last for as long as we keep telling it. So today we're going to hear some of those stories. We're going to hear stories from some of the friends and family who knew Haley the best. We're going to begin with a lady known to Haley her entire life as Miss Sharon, Mrs. Sharon Vandrick. What a crowd. Good morning. My name is Sharon, and I am privileged to have known Haley Houston Odlazel since she was two years old. My family bought the house next door to her 28 years ago, and I'll never forget that first time she walked in my house. She was about, yay high, maybe two and a half years old, too. She had these little blonde pigtails, the cutest thing I ever saw, with those sparkling blue eyes, and she smiled at me. Well, that was it. She captured my heart, the beginning of a beautiful relationship. As Haley grew, she became friends with my, my children, Joe and Jackie, and she often came to play with Jackie. They would, you know, do a few things together, but Haley really preferred baby dolls while Jackie liked to do other things. So after a while, Haley would come and sit with me, and before I knew it, she was opening her heart to me. She was sharing her joys, her worries, her thoughts, and that relationship continued through the years we honestly have shared a bond for life. I enjoyed our talks as much as more than Haley did. She eventually called me her person, and maybe she called some of you that too, I don't know, but I felt honored and blessed, and I have a forever connection, and she blessed my life so much. As a child, again, she was fascinated with her baby dolls, and she loved to pretend like she was a mom. She carried those dolls around for years, and she nurtured them so well. My daughter Jackie eventually became a third wheel when Haley started playing more with her neighbor friend, Robert. Haley proclaimed Robert as her husband, her pretend husband, and she drove Robert around in her little electric Jeep, all while holding that baby doll. She was determined and knew at a very young age that she wanted to become a wife and a mother. In high school, Haley met Taylor Oldazell, and the two of them began dating, and they hit it off. They shared values and interests. Their relationship grew and they became engaged. She was so excited and she planned such an extravagant wedding. As you know, those Houstons know how to throw a party. In December of 2015, a few months before her wedding, she received the diagnosis of advanced ovarian cancer, which was so sad and forever changed her life and the lives of all who loved her. But that diagnosis did not stop Haley from creating that life that she always wanted. She worked through her emotions, she put on her brave face, 
and that girl married Taylor in the most gorgeous celebration of their love. Haley was determined to fight from day one. Their lives quickly turned into doctor visits and chemo and surgery, et cetera, maneuvering the daily needs of an advanced cancer patient. Taylor stood by her side like nothing I've ever seen before. His unwavering love and devotion to Haley continued to grow and mature. I witnessed so many beautiful conversations and things between them, and I'm honored to say that their marriage was a true testimony of commitment, respect, and deep love, which continues to inspire me every day. Oh, Haley never enjoyed being the center of attention, but after her cancer diagnosis, she courageously accepted an invitation to speak at an In the Pink luncheon. She got up there and shared her story. She had laughs, and she just did such a great job. She inspired over 1,000 people in that room that day, and she decided then that she would dedicate part of her life to educating women about ovarian cancer and share her story of hope. Even after her death, her story lives on to encourage and potentially save women's lives. I am so proud of her for her courage and determination. Haley's dream of becoming a mother became a reality with the birth of Weston Bennett Odlazel. Oh, what a beautiful day. <clears throat> Excuse me. That day was undoubtedly one of the best days of her entire life. She was elated and fulfilled in her main two roles as wife and mother. And Weston is such a happy, sweet little young man. He has a heart just like his mom. Haley often told me, she told me these words, she fought so hard and so long to live because of Taylor and Weston. They were her purpose and the biggest part of her, her heart. Haley also adored her family, as Andy said, who I might add, they're one of the closest families that I've ever known. She shared with me that her mom, Simone, was her best friend and her rock. The two loved spending time together, usually ending up in a shopping spree, of course, and they had lots of laughter and fun together. And her dad, Ed, was definitely her biggest protector. He was her healthcare advocate, and he literally did everything in his power to help Haley have more time and enjoyment in the days that she had. They adored each other. She will always be his little princess. Haley was also blessed by her big sister, Amanda. They shared a lot of quality time together at their favorite place, their happy place, the lake house. They watched chick flicks. Haley loved to watch movies. They watched on the couch, they floated in the pool with some sort of fancy cocktail, and they shared a truly unbreakable sisterly bond. She also had the support of her loving in-laws, Laurie and Richard Odlazel. Richard was always the calm and steady force, always there with reassurance to hold a hand, take Weston to the park, or take him into his workshop to show him his latest project. Laurie dedicated unlimited time and her heart caring for both Weston and Haley. Haley often requested her favorite recipes from Laurie, who was so happy to oblige. And Haley loved and appreciated them both, especially because of their unfailing love and care of Weston. In closing, I want to thank all of you that supported her on her journey. There's not enough time to name all the people that made such a huge difference in her life but Haley appreciated each one of you and she loved so deeply. Her life was a testimony of courage and strength and honestly, we are so blessed to be part of her world. I never knew I would learn so many life. <laughs> I learned so much about life through Haley. She taught me so much more than I ever taught her. Shortly before she passed, she shared with me that she had everything she ever wanted in her life. She had gratitude for each day true friends, a loving family, husband and son she adored, joy and faith, and her life was a true gift. She learned and shared the lessons of humility and that we all need to make every day count. She inspires me to be a better person every day. Until I see you again, my sweet Haley girl, I love you. Thank you.
Hello. My name is Jillian, and I'm honored to say for over a decade, Haley has been my best friend. We met in junior high, but we became close when we became college roommates. In college, we had our own rooms, but we spent most of our time on our living room couch, quickly becoming inseparable. Whether we were having sleepovers in our living room or the countless nights in the hospital, we always had fun together. Haley and I had the world's easiest relationship. Haley and I got to know each other so well, it felt like we could communicate without talking. We always knew what each other were thinking without words. I think back to a time that we would revisit and giggle about often. <laughs> I was over at Haley's house and we were probably watching some Lifetime movie when Taylor walked in and gave me the biggest hug. With tears running down his face, he was thanking me for giving Haley such a wonderful gift. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> at the time, Haley had finally gotten some of her hair back for the first time after chemo. I looked over at Haley, over Taylor's shoulder, who was silently laughing and had perfectly styled hair, and I immediately knew what was going on. Haley had a shopping issue. <laughs> uh, Haley had bought herself a brand new, very expensive Dyson blow dryer and told Taylor it was my gift to her because her hair was back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Taylor, I think this is when you're finding out. <laughs> Uh, you did know that your wife had a serious shopping issue and a best friend to keep all of her secrets. <sighs> the next part of the speech, Haley asked me to prepare back in 2016. After all this time, I'm still not ready. Especially being 30 weeks pregnant with her godson, so please bear with me. <sighs> because Haley felt... Like I was in her mind, she asked me to talk on her behalf today. Through every step of her journey, Haley had an incredible amount of support from her community. She felt so incredibly loved and is so thankful to all of you. Taylor would often say that he should replace his door with a revolving door because of all the support and, and constant support. Um, Lori and Richard... The way that you love Weston is the greatest gift you could ever give Haley. Haley feels so much peace knowing that you are there for him, and he is forever grateful for the grandparents you've become. Amanda. There is no bond like the bond between sisters. Thank you for being her most ferocious protector. You are unique like a snowflake, and it is incredible to have a sister as fun and caring as you. Ed and Simone, man. Haley knew she hit the lottery with y'all as parents. Would you say I love you as big as the sky? You truly mean it. You did everything and more to give Haley a beautiful life. She is so thankful to you and she loves you so much. So sorry. I'm very pregnant. <laughs> Taylor, the sacrifices you have had to make over these last eight years is more than anyone, especially Haley, ever wanted to ask you to do. But it revealed what an incredible father, an incredible husband you are. She wants you to have a lifetime of happiness. <laughs> and she will always be with you. Weston. Your mommy loved you so much. She has been talking about you for so long before you were ever here. Uh, she fought so hard for you to be here and she fought so hard to spend all the time with you. Know that your mommy never gave up fighting. It was important for Haley that everyone knows that she did not lose her battle to cancer. She never gave up fighting. She just, her body had nothing else to give, but Haley was fought until the very end. She did not lose, she lived her life. 
What we have once enjoyed deeply, we can never lose. All that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Haley, we forever honor you and we'll forever love you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Julia Lockridge, and this is my husband, Brandon, and we had the honor and privilege of being one of Haley and Taylor's close friends for the past many years. Um, my re relationship with Haley started almost eight years ago when Taylor approached Brandon to get tips for a race that he was doing to bring awareness to ovarian cancer. Once Brandon convinced Taylor to train for her and compete in the Ironman together on her behalf, the rest was history. Haley and I's friendship unfortunately but fortunately flourished after her cancer diagnosis. Not a day went by that I wasn't aware of her situation, but could you ever tell by the way Haley lived? Absolutely not. She lived like no one else I knew. She was determined to be a mom no matter what other people said. She was passionate about the things she believed in or the things she didn't. She was um, spunky, she was spontaneous, she was faithful, she was committed to the people around her, and we all know she was always the hostess with the mostest. She, was always kept, she always kept us on her toes, and without a doubt, she had one of the best laughs you'll ever hear. People always say you can pick your friends, but you cannot pick your family. I'm glad I got to pick a friend who instantly became family. I always could tell Haley everything. No matter the subject or the issue, she was always on my side. She always wanted everyone to be happy and to feel valued. She'd send flowers for anything and everything. Like the day I had to go back to work from maternity leave, or a housewarming gift for Valentine's Day, or even just because. The amount of time someone came to my work and showed up with flowers and the delivery guy thought that it was my husband, Brandon, but it was actually Haley, was too many to count. <laughs> she even made sure two weeks ago, the Sunday before she passed, for my 30th birthday, I'd have some at home. She was a great listener. Unless it was always Taylor quizzing her on some sport or some show on TV, she was always there to listen and give advice. I've learned over the past few days that um, Haley and I, or my husband also with her, um, there was always something that she would do, um, but something special to me that we always did. Um, it's something so simple, yet so meaningful. Um, no matter what was happening uh, or going on, we could always just send an I love you text and know that one of us was thinking about each other. I know some days were good days, and I know some of those were bad, but I always wanted her to know that she was always being thought of. One of her biggest fears was being forgotten, and oh, what I will do to make sure that doesn't happen. A little over a year ago, Brandon and I found out that we were gonna be parents. It was something that Haley and Taylor asked us about all the time. All the time. <laughs> And when it came time to tell them, I was so unsure how Haley would feel. If you know Haley, like Sharon talked about, you know babies were something that brought her an immense amount of joy, but sometimes was often met with some sadness. The day came for us to tell them, and the number of tears from her eyes and smiles and screaming that came from her mouth is something I will never forget. She was my biggest supporter. From that day on, she was so fearful that she would never get to come and be in, would never get to see me become a mom or meet our baby. And thank God, the fighter she is, she got to be there, come to the hospital and meet her baby this past March. Brandon and I will never, never take that for granted. Um, Haley loved her family. A lot of us have already talked about it, but she loved her family. She talked about them all the time. 
She always made sure they were cared for. She never wanted to leave anyone out. She, ne she wanted to make memories with them. She always wanted what was best, whether it made them happy or not. And she loved her mom and dad. Ed and Simone, you were the best parents to Haley. You fought this fight just as hard as she did, and you never gave up. Thank you for showing us what it looks like to love your kids on the mountains and in the valleys. You two always held strong to what you believed in, and you were always there for Haley no matter what. Brandon and I will love you guys very much. Amanda, where do I begin? The best sister and friend that God could have ever given Haley. Whether you felt it all the time or not, Haley loved you very, very much. Sisters can be sisters. I know, I'm the youngest of three. We all know there were times you didn't see eye to eye or Haley was too strong-willed or stubborn to let up on you, but we know in the end you were her sister and you two are ride or dies. You were there for her from the beginning to the very end. You spoke up for her when she needed another voice. You gave her a shoulder to cry on when the tears came. And when it was time for another movie or a wine night, you were the first one there. The relationship you two had is something I'll strive to have from now on with my two older sisters. Amanda Haley loved you. In the days to come, I hope you cling to that. <clears throat> now for Taylor, Haley's best friend and love of her life. Thank you for making that call to Brandon eight years ago. You and Haley became me and Brandon's people. You're the strongest person I know, and I know you loved her with your whole being. I know there were times that she'd nag you about what OCD thing you did that day or the way you cooked your meat and smelled the house up, but let's be real, she wouldn't have traded it for the world. You were always up for anything. If it made ha Haley happy, you wanted to do it. However, nothing made Haley happier than watching you be a dad to Weston. Taylor, you have set an example for every person in this room of what it looks like to live out in sickness and in health. Thank you for loving our Haley the way that you did. There is so much more that I could say about my Haley today. Unfortunately, there's just not enough time in this service or the minutes in the day to even touch on who she was and what she meant to me. I said this earlier this week, but I never knew I needed a friend like Haley. I never thought I'd have a friend like her, and I'm so grateful I did. Our entire friendship, I told people that I knew God was gonna work a miracle and that she was gonna be healed. I just always had the feeling. Brandon and I would talk about it often, but we just never knew when or how. We begged and we pleaded with God. I knew that he always answered prayers and he had the power to heal, but we just continued to wait. One of the hardest parts about being a believer is waiting for prayer to be answered and for waiting to see what God's plan is. Haley and I talked about this often. She always talked about being healed, but we just never knew what that would look like. Today we know. Today, we know our Haley is healed. She's made whole, and she has the best seat in the house. Haley, thank you for letting us be a small part of your story. Thank you for blessing us with being the godparents to Weston and letting us be a part of your family. We promise to take care of your boys. We love you. Always, Julia and Brandon. Hello, my name is Amber Livingston, and this is my husband, Clayton. For the last 14 years, we have been blessed and honored with Haley's friendship. Haley and I initially bonded 
over our sense of humor and how terrible we were at math. We continued to bond as we married our high school sweethearts and shared love of food and wine. I always loved Haley's persistence. When she set her mind to something, it was going to happen. For our senior prom, Haley wanted purple shoes. Well, when she realized the perfect purple shoes were nowhere to be found, she found the perfect white shoes, and then proceeded to find a place that could dye her shoes purple. Persistence paid off. They were beautiful. But Haley's feet were dyed purple for the next few days. <laughs> we all teased her for having purple feet, but she simply just did not care, which was another trait I absolutely loved about her. Our friendship evolved over the years as we matured, entered new stages of life, and developed new appreciations and interests. But most importantly, it only grew stronger. I will forever be thankful for the wisdom and values that Haley shared with me, most of which could only be gained by someone whose life was compressed into 30 years without a moment to spare. When Haley began to enter her final chapter of life, she understood time management was key. As she began to shift her focus to those closest to her, she emphasized her love to those around her while she cherished every opportunity to receive from others. During these crucial concluding moments of her life, she taught me that above all, loving big and being loved by those who mean the most to you is the most valuable way to spend your time. I hope to forever live by those values Haley taught me. I will miss those random phone calls during my workday asking, hey, I planned a trip, can you go? Only to find out that after completely committing without all the details that the trip was next week. I will miss those times I let Haley and Clayton walk off in Central Market to indulge in their shared appreciation for bougie things. Only for Taylor and I to find out that the olive oil, wine, cheese, and especially salt would cost us a fortune. Haley always said, don't take this for granted. During Haley's final days, I was sitting on her side. Taylor brought over a wrapped gift that Haley had made for Clayton and I. That was my Haley. Always thinking of everyone else, even when she had every excuse not to. Haley's friendship was everything. She had a way of bringing everyone together and, it, and the power to introduce strangers and create lifelong friends. Haley, you fought so hard and you inspired so many and were the most beautiful and thoughtful friend. You were the best mom, the best daughter, the best sister. I promise you will never ever be forgotten until I see you again, my girl. Hi, I'm Amanda, Haley's sister. This is Kelly Chabala, one of her sister friends. <laughs> as you can see, she treats a lot of her friends as her sisters. It was no secret that Haley was a beautiful person. Obviously, insight as many learned, but can we just talk about her looks first? Have you ever known anyone to rock a blonde pixie, then long brown curls, a messy top bun, or even no hair at all, and still look flawless. Not many, that's for sure. She would dress herself in classic all black and look so chic with the occasional pop of color. She was the queen of accessories, thanks to our New York City shopping sprees while visiting Dr. Chi. I hope she really loves mine today. <laughs> she flourished in her fashion sense. She became fearless and confident and rocked the fashion world with whatever look her sickness threw at her. I lost my person. I miss her. I miss her every day forever. I'll miss her in every peony or tulip I see. 
every beautiful Christmas tree, every time I watch the holiday, Home Alone, Practical Magic, or Father of the Bride, every gin and tonic, every charcuterie board, part of Haley's bouginess, even before they became popular. I also really notice her, this is a side note, her dimple in my son. She had one dimple and my son has one dimple and it came out the last few years and it's adorable. <laughs> um, Haley and I were blessed to be very well traveled. I could name all the places right now, but really one of the most memorable that will forever live in my heart is a family vacation in Florida just a few months ago. Getting away and unplugging for a week on a gorgeous beach, focusing only on making memories as a complete family was simply the best and a memory I will treasure forever. Haley has always loved the beach and sunsets and calm waters. The Bahamas was also on her bucket list, one of the more extravagant things. Little did we know at the time she would be able to surpass the odds of her health like she did so many times before and conquer that dream as well. She made it there, she enjoyed watching her family and was so grateful. When Haley and I were younger, she would sneak into my room and ask to sleep with me. As the big sister, I thought I needed to establish boundaries. So I came up with a plan to give her night-night passes. She could use them whenever she needed them, but she only got so many. Let's just say they ran out rather quickly. Oh, what I wouldn't give for Haley to knock on my door right now, crawl into bed, and cash in a night-night pass. She loved to be cuddled. In grade school, I would always tell her to stick up for herself. Don't be too shy. She was shy at one point. Be strong, even if it's against me. I remember she used that advice quite often to me, and we fought like sisters, of course. I thought as the big sister, I needed to teach her, but she taught me so much more. It's almost like she would do the opposite of what I would say on purpose. If we were at a nail salon, she would ask which color. Of course, she always went with the opposite. If she asked thoughts on a dress or paint color, she would always do the one she really wanted. She was wise beyond her years, so strong and determined and maybe a little stubborn. She always knew that she wanted what she wanted from such a young age and made it happen. This is obviously a common thing in every speech. <laughs> she was never a fan of school, so college was just a blip on her plans. She wanted to be a mom. She wanted to marry Taylor. She wanted to cook and bake and decorate her home. Her home was always so cozy and inviting and made everyone want to stay forever. A flaw at times because she was like, okay, I'm tired, it's time to go. Haley just has a way of making you fall in love with her and all of her funny antics. We joked about that often. We will miss her witty responses a lot. Haley was able to find her true love, Taylor. She touched the hearts of a sweet family that helped her make her dream to become a mom a reality. I will always be thankful for them. Weston is, in, is her heart and soul, and she found the way she fought the way she did for herself and family because of that sweet boy. She inexplicably, inexplicably found a way to live life while dying. With odds that seemed impossible, she still created an incredible life and she filled her life with moments of happiness and joy. Her coping skills are insurmountable and I only wish that I could take that with me in my future as well. Haley was an inspiration for so many. I don't just mean the recent, recent unexpected social media phenomenon, which truly did impact and give hope to so many people. Haley and Taylor included. But she inspired everyone around her well before then. Every medical professional she came across in her many trips to the hospitals and surgeries and treatments. They would always mention how she was such a bright light in their day and an angel. She 
she was the one patient everyone always remembered, and they would say she touched them in a special way. Aside from the medical community, Haley was an inspiration to everyone who came in her path. Many people have said they consider themselves truly lucky to have known her, if even for a short amount of time, as everyone said as well, so I didn't even have to put that in here. <laughs> I feel so blessed and honored that she is my sister. Haley never got the plan, the life she had planned for herself. Can you imagine having to learn, hurt, love, and live so quickly? Haley blessed this world for 30 years, a huge milestone she wasn't sure she was gonna make it to. In eight of those years, she had to fast forward a lot of big life moments and build core memories all the time. From marriage to recent, her life was on the fast track and in constant survival mode. If anyone didn't deserve that, it was Haley. Right now, I am feeling peace for my sister. She did not deserve any of the physical and emotional pain and suffering. But just like Jesus, she suffered and others' lives were changed. And circling this circumstance back to God is exactly what Haley and Taylor have taught us all. Their faith has been assembled during these hardships, and that is a witness story. I think to myself all the time, if Haley can do dot, 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 then I can do this. If she can speak it in the pink when she really didn't even want anyone looking straight at her, I can do this. <laughs> if Haley were here, what would she say? How would she handle it? Is it worth the stress or heartache or anger? I ask that all the time when I'm having a moment. She makes me a better person every day. And I will continue to do so each and every day. I've never shared this poem with Haley. However, I found it a few years ago and knew it was when I wanted to share with her. She always tells our kids, when I'm not here, where will I be? In your heart. So a poem by E.E. E. Cummings. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me as you are doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true, and you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud, and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. Thank you to everyone's love and support. Haley, girl, I love you. Because this guy. Good morning. Thank you for being here. We make Haley really happy. Oh. There are a million tiny things that make Haley girl so loved and special. Her smile, her laugh, her wittiness, the way she soaked up every minute of every day, and her perspective on life. She and Amanda always greeted their dad with a smile when he got home from work. They would be so excited to pull off his boots. It was a struggle when you're that small. 
their little pigtails flying all the way they looked at him as if he were the most important person in the world. She always made you feel that you were loved, important, and her best friend. Haley was such a sweet soul. She always made you feel special. And poor, she made you feel loved, important, and like you're her best friend. Haley was a sweet, beautiful baby. Um, her daily attire was a wedding dress and a wedding veil, or go to the grocery store with a boa and a hat on and get a lot of compliments. Um, her obsession with baby dolls began at a really early age, as been mentioned before. One day I took her to the doll hospital. She was about three and she wanted to have a new doll. She chose an anatomically correct baby doll. His name was Ryan. He went everywhere with us, even vacations. He was a lucky little Ryan. As long as I can remember, she wanted to be a wife, a mother when she grew up. That's all she wanted to be. She succeeded in that. She got her boys, Taylor and Weston. She adored them both so much. I could go on and on about how much she wanted to stay here for them. She tried, she tried as long as she could. Haley met Taylor in high school, high school sweethearts. They were the love of each other's life. So in love and so much wiser than your, their years, they really are smart about things. After she was diagnosed with cancer, she told him, this is not what you signed up for. I will understand if, if you wanna walk away. And as we can all see, he never wavered from his devotion, love, and true compassion for her. Every day, their love has gone the distance. Theirs is the true love story. There are so many fun memories of Haley over the years. I'd like to share a couple with you. One sunny summer day, we were boating with friends on Lake Conroe. Haley and her little girlfriend were about 10 years old. The day had been spent tubing, swimming, and enjoying the water. By the afternoon, our friends were thinking it was getting close for them to have to, have to leave. The husband had to go to work. He said, I sure wished I could tell a fib and not have to go to work today. We're having so much fun. Haley's response was, why don't you just talk, call your boss and tell him that you have gingivitis? That should work. So, she always had a solution for something. Oh, we were laughing so hard, we rocked the boat for quite a ways. She was always so sharp and witty with the comebacks. Another fond memory came to Ed's mind about the time, oh, goodness, here, let me see. Okay, I'm good. Another fond memory came to his mind about a time that he arrived home one day and he pulled into the driveway. He noticed that my car, which was parked on the street, had damage to the front left bumper and fender. He got out of his car and then noticed that Haley's car had damage to the right rear quarter panel. He came inside the house and asked Haley what had happened to her car. And she's like, well, what do you mean? She, they both walked out and he asked her again, looking at the car, what did you do? You hit the cars. And she, heard, she, she said, you, I must have done it while I was driving into the driveway. And I, her response says, I, I felt something, but I really wasn't sure what happened, but I'm, I'm sorry, daddy. <laughs> I'll try and do better, leaving him no path forward to express his aggravation. <laughs> Another favorite story involves 
Dixie's love of gambling, Haley's love of gambling, Pop's love of gambling. I guess it's genetic. She got um, her, her grandmother, Dixie, and her grandfather, Pop, loved Las Vegas. Big gamblers. So we decided one day when she was feeling pretty down, let's go to Las Vegas. So we hit Caesar's Palace, gambling away. Haley and Jillian had been playing a few games for a couple of days. Halfway through the final days, Haley wins about $1,200 on penny slots. <laughs> she was elated. She was jumping up and down, screaming and laughing like little girls. She immediately cashed in her winnings and went straight to the Louis Vuitton shop that she had been sitting there pulling that wheel. Louis Vuitton, I'm going to go over there. And she did. She cashed in her winnings, got that Louis Vuitton bag, first one, and she was a mere 23 years old. Oh, she was something else. Haley is so much more, and was so much more than a woman with cancer. She knew how to have fun and live life big. Ed and I are proud and hurting at the same time. We raise our children to be positive lights and unbelievable contributors to the world that we try to make better. Haley did that and so much more. She was a tenacious fighter, a warrior, and through her battle was long and painful. She never wavered from her faith. She taught all of us so much how to be a better mother, how to be a better father, a better daughter, wife, and friend. Most of all, she taught us all how to live big and wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. The way she loved and cared for those important to her was exceptional. Her appreciation of life, family, and the little things that touch your heart. Haley was an extraordinary woman, daughter, sister, wife, and mother friend as well. Haley wanted Weston to know that she loved him very much and tried to stay for him as long as she could. And she did her very best. I saw her fight every day. She tried. For Ed and I, it has been a joy, a privilege, and a blessing to raise her to raise her. There's no more pain. Oh, excuse me. We are strong in our faith and believe that she's celebrating in God's glory, his glorious paradise. No more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. We will miss her smile, her laugh, and her playfulness, and of course her silly jokes. But the scars and loss that we endure will be forever. Deep grief is the price of deep love. Ed has said that he is right. We will find peace when we see those big blue eyes again. Until that time comes. And we will be together. We love you as peace the sky is our family saying. And my precious girl... When my time comes, I will run to you with all my might. Rest well, my love. Thank you. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. I can tell you how many times I heard those words come out of Haley's mouth. It's just not fair. Sometimes with anger, sometimes with sadness, sometimes sprinkled in with a four letter word or two, but 
she said over and over again to me, it's not fair. I first met Haley and Taylor about three years ago when my family and I moved to the Woodlands. Uh, I'm a pastor here in town and our friends, Julie and Brandon, who you've already heard from, uh, began telling us about this couple, began telling us about this family. Two beautiful high school sweethearts with the world ahead of them, devastated by an untimely and unfair diagnosis. We met them, we fell in love with them, and they became a part of our small group that meets in our home each Monday night. That meant that I played a very unique role as both one of Haley's friends and one of her pastors. Clearly, she needed more than one. That unique position, that unique relationship that I had with Haley meant that she and I had open and honest conversations. We talked a lot about heaven and what it would be like. We talked about how easy it was to doubt the goodness of God in the midst of so much tragedy and how those doubts can lead to a stronger faith. But more than any of that, we talked about the big why questions. She'd often th say things like, why did this happen? Why me? Why us? Why not someone else? It's just not fair. Over the past couple of weeks, I've gone through my text messages with Haley, as I'm sure many of you have as well. And looking back, I knew this, but now I appreciate it even more how much I love her brutal honesty. In one thread, she expressed sadness and she begged God for more children, but didn't get that blessing. She said, and I quote, I would do anything to just have another baby and to be healthy. She said, I just don't get it. I know there are no answers. There's no good answers. I'm just so angry. She was then concerned that she had offended me because my wife and I had just had our third child. And I assured her that she, did, that, that she didn't. And then she said, if anything, I'm real. I'm 100% transparent and I appreciate that in others. Life is too short. Sometimes it's just blanking rude. Root of God, root of the universe. I don't understand and I never will. Anyways, thanks, coming, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, one of the last times I met with Haley uh, about a month and a half ago, she was giving me another one of those TED Talks about how unfair everything was. And she had done this plenty of times before, most of the time with anger, fear, four-letter words, and profound sadness. But this time, this time, just about six weeks ago, Haley's demeanor was different. For so long, we had been praying for her to experience peace, the peace of Christ in the midst of her suffering. I, I, I talked with Haley. She just wanted to be able to accept the fact that she would leave this world. And I said, Haley, I, I don't think you're ever going to get there. But I said, let's pray for peace in the middle of it. I'll never forget as she talked about how unfair all of it was. I saw that piece. I turned one of her questions around on her and I asked her why. She said, it's just not fair. But I said, Haley, why do you feel like it's so unfair? I knew the answer. But this time she said, because I have such an amazing life. She said, I have an amazing husband, an amazing son. I've, got amazing, I've gone amazing places and I have an amazing family that loves me so much. She said, so many people want to leave this life because it's so hard. She said, but I don't want to leave mine because it has been so amazing. Um, let me tell you a little secret about pastors and pastors Chris and Carrie could correct me, but um, we don't have all the answers. And the many times that Haley complained about how fair it all, unfair it all was, I told her that. I said, Haley, I'll listen, but I don't have the answers. I told her I couldn't explain why any of this happened. I can't give a rationale for how any of this makes sense. All I could do was explain that in a world after Genesis 3, sin exists. And therefore, even we don't deserve it, even when it's unfair, cancer exists. And because cancer exists, death exists not the way that God wanted it to be. And it's just not fair. But we celebrate today because Haley knows that that story, God's redemptive story did not end at Genesis 3. And that's why we celebrate. 
Haley knew that she didn't have to die in her sin and that's because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and in the empty tomb. And because of Haley's acceptance of that grace, we will see her again. She's now experiencing a joy like she's never felt, a healing that she never knew, and a love that is pure and undefiled. See, here's the sad reality. It's not fair. It's not fair that Haley had cancer. It's not fair that such a light in this world only had 30 years on this planet. It's not fair that Weston will grow up without his mom and that Taylor will live the rest of his life without the love of his life. None of that is fair. But it's also not fair that we receive the grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid the price that we deserve to pay. And when we receive the gift of eternal life with him, even though we don't deserve it. Here's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He says, for our sake, he made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He takes our sin, we receive his righteousness, and that's not fair. Haley didn't deserve cancer, but none of us deserve grace. Haley taught me a lot of lessons. She may be a better person, a better friend, and a better pastor. She helped me grapple with some of life's deepest questions. But of all the things that Haley taught me, one thing will stand out the most. Haley taught me that all that really matters in life is two things. The people that love you and what you did with Jesus Christ. Over the past few weeks, we knew that the end was near. And in those past few weeks, money didn't matter. Experiences, the amazing experiences that she had, they didn't really matter. Education or titles didn't matter. All that mattered to Haley and all that really matters to you and me is the people that love you and what you do with Jesus. So in memory of Haley, who lived an unfair life and receives an unfair reward, love the people around you. Show them your love, care for them, reach out to them, hug them. In another one of her TED Talks to me, Haley asked, why do we say everything we want people to know about them at their funeral? Why not when they're alive? Tell the people that you're around you that you love, that you love them as big as the sky and tell them why. And if you haven't considered it before, consider making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. It's as simple as acknowledging that unfair trade that he takes away your sin and gives you righteousness, mercy, grace, and the gift that Haley now experiences of eternal life with him. Haley lived an unfair life. But because of her faith in Jesus Christ, she has now received heaven as her reward. And now in heaven, Haley might understand a little bit more about her diagnosis than she did on this side of glory. She told me that she and God were gonna have lots of conversations when she got up there. Because, and I told her understandably, she had quite a bone to pick with God. He's big enough to receive it. And I'm sure God has heard plenty of those TED Talks. But now Haley can understand what we only grasp, that life is not fair, but neither is grace. Thanks be to God that in the midst of her unfair life, Haley knew that unfair grace. Would you pray with me? God, on this beautiful morning, we give you thanks for Haley's life. We thank you for each moment that we got to spend with her that we reflect on now in our hearts. We thank you for her brutal honesty, for her joy, for her tenacity, and for her love. And I thank you that her faith in your son gave her the strength that she needed when she walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I pray for that person here or watching online who might not know your grace. I pray that as they reflect on Haley's life, they might be open to receiving your love, your forgiveness, your grace, and the eternal life that Haley now experiences. I pray that they and we might all acknowledge our sinfulness and your perfection and make you the Lord of our lives. Finally, until the day that we see Haley again, I pray that you will give us the strength to love those around us and to live our lives fully in her memory. In the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll invite you to take a look at your screens as we remember Haley's life through pictures. You can tell your old man you'll do some large mouth fish in another town. You just got too much on your plate to bait and cast the line. You can always put a rain check in his hand Till you can You can keep putting off forever With that girl whose heart you hold Swearing that you'll last someday Further down the road You can always put a diamond on her you can If you got a chance Take it Take it while you got a chance If you got a dream Chase it Cause a dream won't chase you back If you're gonna love somebody Hold them as long and as strong And as close as you can Until you can not hidden there's never been a moment you were forgotten you are not hopeless though you have been broken your innocence stolen but i hear you whisper underneath your breath i hear
I've got one response I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide I will worship you So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again you get shy on me lift up your soul cause you've got a line inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord oh come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a line inside What I'm about to tell you, you just saw. You saw the story of, of a young teenager who we all, we, we saw him, you know, Haley started bringing him around to family events, and, and we thought with Haley, for, for a guy to pursue Haley, his standards had to be the highest, because she's so beautiful and such a unique, caring personality, and great wit and all that. And then we started to meet Taylor, and we thought, well, Haley's standards, well, you know, it might have slipped a little bit. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Keeping an eye on Laurie here. Uh, no, we, we saw a young teenager from a great family uh, who was caring and devoted to Haley since day one, and he was kind to all of us, including Haley's well-armed father, uh, smart kid. We saw that young teenager grow into the kind of man who would stand at the altar across from his high school sweetheart, knowing the diagnosis she had received, and say, I am with you until the end. And we all get to bear witness that Taylor kept that promise. Taylor, I'm about to ask you to do the hardest thing you've ever done. I know that your love for Haley and Haley's love for you, even right now, will get you through it. I've told you this. I, I always thought of Haley like a little sister, so I hope it's okay that I think of you as a brother. So Taylor, this time is yours. Come on this stage and tell us about your wife.
Wow. <clears throat> Just speaks to who Haley is, looking at all of you here. I have always worn my emotions on my sleeve, so bear with me today. I will probably lose my composure. This is going to be one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's hard to believe I'm even standing here right now. I've had quite a few years to process and think about not only what I was going to say, but how I was going to convey what an incredible life Haley lived. But first, I would like to thank all of you here today. I can't tell you how amazing all of the support and prayers have been for so many years. By the looks of the amount of people here today, looks like Haley touched a lot of people. To all my close friends here, thank you for being here and always being there for me, Haley and Weston. I will always cherish our friendship. I know that Weston and myself will have an amazing support group no matter the time of day. I can always call you guys if I need something. I would also like to thank Haley's parents and my parents. We are sure have been through a lot together and we wouldn't have made it this far without y'all. Mom, Dad, Jordan, Ed, Simone, Amanda, Dominic, I love you all. And I love you, son. Thank you for always being there. You always remember the days of the dates that change your life. So where do I start? Uh, how about from the very beginning? It's been about 15 years and I still remember the day I first met Haley. I can even remember what she was wearing. It was, I was at one of my teammates end of the year baseball parties at his house and all of a sudden I noticed this extremely beautiful girl had just arrived. I was like, dang, I need to get to know her. Um, but I was a nerdy and shy high schooler. I didn't know what to say. It just so happens that by the grace of God that apparently she wanted to meet me too. Haley was the braver one and introduced herself to me and eventually got my number. I was shocked. Not only was she the first girl to pay attention to me, she was insanely beautiful. After that, we started texting, talking on the phone, and hanging out. We spent most of the summer of 2008 together, but she refused to date me, and I thought she might be leading me on. So when school started up again, I backed off a bit, and sure enough, she immediately came running. <laughs> Girls are confusing. <laughs> um, we started dating uh, September 3rd, 2008. The reason I know that is, is like I said before, you always remember the days that change your life. We were high school sweethearts, and kept dating all through college. I knew from the beginning that I was going to marry her. As each year came and went, Haley was getting more and more antsy about getting engaged. I wanted to make sure I graduated college first uh, before I moved on to that stage in my life, and thankfully she was patient. Finally, the time came and I proposed on December 1st, 2014 in Breckenridge, Colorado. Like I said earlier, you remember the dates of the days that change your life. Haley immediately began planning her wedding because every girl dreams of their fairy tale wedding. It's all she could talk about every day. Fast forward to December 15th, 2015, a day that changed all of our lives and brought us here today. Our world was flipped upside down and we went from being excited about getting married to Haley battling for her life. We got married February 27th, 2016. Two months later, Haley fought through a major surgery thanks to your prayers and a blessing from a surgeon in New York City. We immediately worked on her recovery so we could try to get our life back on track and have somewhat of a normal marriage. As most of you know, the cancer and the surgery took away the ability for Haley to have children, which was her greatest dream in life but God always finds a way to provide. Our good friend Jacqueline Krautner offered to be a surrogate for Haley and I. She told Haley that she deserves to be a mother and that she wanted to make that dream a reality for us. What an incredible selfless act of kindness. So when Haley was in a good spot health-wise, we decided to move forward with it. You always remember the days that change your lives. In January 28, 2019, our lives changed forever. 
our son Weston was born. To watch Haley's face as Weston was being born was an indescribable moment. Jacqueline, I don't think you will ever fully understand what you gave Haley that day. You gave us the greatest gift in the world. I just want you to know how thankful we are and Haley and I will always love you. Haley and I had more than our share of tough moments, but she never failed to keep me laughing. So I got two short stories for you guys. First, um, back in high school, we were, my family always takes a trip to Colorado, so, and we drive there. Uh, Haley's from a family that flies, so that was quite shocking for her. <laughs> um, and so the route that we go to Colorado uh, requires us to go through the corner of New Mexico. So you're not in the state very long. So she's listening to her iPod and we cross through the border of uh, Texas and New Mexico. And my dad says, oh, we're in New Mexico now. And then about an hour later, we're crossing into Colorado and dad says, all right, Colorado now. And she looks up and she goes, that's the smallest state I've ever been in. <laughs> just, just caught us all off guard a little bit. Um, so this next story, um, she requested that I tell this and I got her permission. So um, she, she thought everyone would really enjoy hearing this one. So a couple years ago, Haley uh, had to get a colostomy bag. And you know, obviously you can imagine it's not uh, very fun to have that attached to your body at all times and it's very restricting. And um, it was the heat of July and I walk in the kitchen and I look out in the backyard and there's Haley standing there watering plants with no shirt, no bra, and no colostomy bag, in the, literally in the backyard. I'm like, what are you doing? And so I go out there and I'm like, Haley, cover up, you know, we're, we're, we're in, you're in the backyard, someone's gonna see you. In her fashion, she looks at me, I'm living my best life and leave me alone about it. <laughs> She's like, I need to be free today, I can't stand this. I'm like, whatever. So uh, I, uh, I go back inside and in typical Haley fashion, she had forgot that she had put the dry cleaning on the back door for the tide cleaners to come pick up. <laughs> so this poor man, <laughs> he walks in the backyard, does 10 double takes. There's a woman standing there with no shirt on and a, and a wound because you know, she didn't have a bag over her ostomy. And, he doesn't know whether to run or, or to, he finally grabs the laundry and just sprints to his van. And I, I come out and she just says one thing to me, that poor man. <laughs> so that, that made me laugh pretty good. But I was fortunate enough to have a front row seat to Haley changing everyone around her. Haley went through an immense amount of pain and suffering mentally, physically, and emotionally from the day she was diagnosed. It was always our mission to help as many as we could with our story. That is why we have been so public about it. I've always believed that people are more affected by watching you live than being told how to live. I'm sure a lot of us go to church every Sunday and hear a great sermon, but what impacts us the most is watching people live what God preaches. There's a saying I like to live by, your actions speak so loud I can't hear what you're saying. Haley and I tried to make sure we could be examples of what it means to be a godly, loving couple. And the biggest part of achieving that is sticking with your partner through the terrible times as well as the good. With what I've seen her go through, it's a lot of responsibility for me to try to do her justice to continue her message today and the years to come. She deserves it. She's earned that. I'm gonna take the opportunity today to use Haley's story to share some things that I've learned. Haley changed everything about my life and has taught me countless lessons. With Haley and I being so young when the diagnosis happened, it has allowed me to apply these lessons for the rest of my life. First, put God first. I was raised in a Christian home and I've always been taught to put your faith in the Lord I remember growing up and going to church and it seemed like every service I attended, the message was centered towards getting through a hardship in life. But at the time I was a kid, I didn't understand why that was the message every week. I thought life was pretty great and easy. 
I had parents who did a lot for me. It wasn't until I graduated college that I realized how hard and cruel life is, especially when my world came crashing down with Haley's diagnosis. That is when I realized why being raised in a Christian home and putting God first is, in your life is so fundamentally important. I didn't realize it at the time, but growing up in the faith was laying the foundation for how I was gonna handle the hard task that was given to me by God. God is the only way to get through hardships and the cruelty of life. He gives you the tools to make it through difficulties. Secondly, don't take your health for granted. I had no idea how much we all take our health for granted and don't even realize it. My mindset around health has completely changed. For example, when my alarm goes off at 5 a.m. and I don't wanna get out of bed to go to the gym, I think how much Haley would give to be able to go to the gym and work out. The fact that I can go work out is a blessing because so many people can't. What one person sees as a burden, others see as a blessing. I asked Haley one time, what if you woke up tomorrow completely healed, what would be the first thing that you would change because of what you have learned? She said, I would be the biggest workout fitness nut you have ever seen. So what does that tell you? Don't take your health for granted. A healthy person wants 10,000 things and a sick person only wants one thing. Thirdly, enjoy the little things. We all get so wrapped up in the big stuff in our life that we forget to take a step back and look around. So many great memories are happening around us, but we are too focused on things that don't matter. Just being able to sit on my back porch and watch Weston play in the sprinkler is a memory that can be cherished for the rest of my life. I have learned to soak up the simplest of moments because I have perspective of what truly matters in life. Fourth, don't waste an opportunity to change somebody's life. Because of what we were going through, people came to us for help because they knew we would understand and maybe be able to help them. That was when Haley and I decided to fully embrace our role and make sure we could help as many as we could. And by helping, maybe all you have to do is be a living example of what God asks of us. Fifth, love hard. Haley put on a master class on how to love deeply. As a caregiver to someone who is sick, your love for them grows deeper. When someone you love is sick and they are at their lowest moments, it's their caregiver's responsibility to pull them out of it. And in those moments, the love for one another is strengthened. I had to do that so many times that I have lost count. I cannot describe in words the deep love that I have for Haley. A few weeks ago, Ed and Simone were at my house while Haley was sleeping and we were discussing how hard our lives were going to be without her. I finally realized why the pain was so deep. Haley was just so easy to love and she loved everyone she met. The people that love hard are the ones that are so difficult to let go. I look at how many people around the world have been affected by Haley's story, but really it's Haley's love that has affected them. When I see the thousands of messages from strangers telling me what she has done for them in their lives and would do anything to meet her, it makes me feel so blessed that I got to be the lucky one that got to marry her. Haley never missed an opportunity to tell me or anyone else that she loved them. I recommend you all do the same in your own lives. My sixth and final lesson is counting your blessings even during the hard times. Counting your blessings during the hard times is the most important time to do so. It's natural for us to always want more, bigger and better. Counting your blessings is what keeps you grounded. Every night before bed, even on the toughest of days, Haley and I always made it a point to think of things we were grateful for that day. I'll set an example right now. As much as it sucks that Haley got sick and that we lived eight years of really hard times, that our lives were completely derailed, that cancer took away Haley's ability to have children and that cancer ultimately took her life. I am grateful for every second that I spent with her. I am grateful for the lessons she taught me. I am grateful for the amazing friends that came into our lives. I am grateful for my supportive family. I am grateful for Jacqueline, our surrogate. And lastly, I am grateful for my son, Weston and that he has his mother's heart.
He is going to be my saving grace through this journey. I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you I am scared for my life without Haley. I don't know how to live without her. She's been a part of my life for over half of my life. Haley has been a part of every major moment in my life. She was there when I graduated high school, when I got into A&M, when I graduated A&M, when I got my first job out of college, when we got engaged, when I did an Ironman, and when we had Weston. It breaks my heart that I will have to experience more big moments without her. I don't know how to be a single parent, but I do know if I put my faith in the Lord and apply the six lessons Haley taught me, I will make it through. She didn't know it at the time, but she was making a roadmap for me to be able to carry on. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I take that to mean that no matter how tragic things can be, the Lord uses those times to create good. I have no doubt that Haley's story, as heartbreaking as it is, will be used to help other people in their struggles in life as well as their faith with Christ. Haley is a light that shines so bright and people are just drawn to her. They don't really know why, but they find themselves wanting to know her, be with her, and be associated with her. I think about it, if you think about it, it is, isn't that the way we all are with Christ? We all have a subconscious yearning to know Christ, which tells me Christ is working through Haley. Over the years, Haley and I have had many conversations on why us and why hasn't God healed her. We are human and we wanted answers. We all know God is capable of healing Haley at any moment. As the years went on, I finally realized that God was using her for a greater purpose. Haley was chosen to change people. I would like to close with a short story of a conversation Haley and I had. A few months ago, we were sitting in the living room talking about our life, and I said to her, Haley, God is using you in your situation to help others. In Haley's humorous way, she responded with, well, I didn't agree to that and God didn't ask me. <laughs> I responded with, God doesn't give these hard tasks to just anyone. You have been given a great responsibility. She was quiet for a few seconds, thinking about what I just said. I walked over to her, grabbed her hand, I said to her, God could heal you right now, which would give you an amazing story to tell, that God does miracles. But there are already so many people who can tell that story. Think of the story that you have if you aren't healed. The fact that you know how to praise God in spite of the suffering you are enduring, that you know how to focus on so much more in life rather than how bad you have it, to show people that you can be patient with your suffering here on earth because you know you will spend eternity with no suffering. Not very many people can understand that. How many people do you think God trusts with this responsibility? Not very many. You will do more for God than most people ever dream of. So many people need healing in order to believe in Christ or believe their heart or, be, or because their hearts are so sick. That doesn't apply to you. She quietly nodded in agreement as her eyes began to tear up. I told her I have one more thought for you. I asked her, do you remember the parable of the lost sheep? She responded, yes, but can you read it to me? So I got out my Bible and read. Which of you men, if you had 100 sheep and lost one of them, wouldn't leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that was lost until he found it? When he has found it, he carries it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends, his family, and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I tell you that even so, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Haley sat there processing what I said with confusion. I said to her, maybe you're being used to save the one sheep that went astray. Is your suffering worth it if you save just one person? She responded, I don't know. I have suffered greatly. I looked at her, began to tear up, I said, well, I am the one that I am the stray sheep. 
you were sent here to save me, and you did. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be the man I am today, and I definitely wouldn't have the faith I have now. Is your suffering worth it now? Am I worth saving? Tears began to stream down her face, and she began to understand her purpose. She said, of course, I would save you a thousand times over. <sighs> Haley, I love you. You saved me in every way a person can be saved. You are my hero. You are my soulmate. I will always miss you. I will always love you. You always have Weston and I's heart. I know you are no longer in pain. I will see you again. I love you, sweetheart. The Bible tells us that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived or imagined the glory of what God has prepared for those who love him. We can only imagine what Haley is experiencing right now. when Jesus Christ was dying on the cross, he said, it is finished. He didn't say, I am finished. He said, it. Death is finished. And Haley, Haley's not finished. Haley's alive. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for preparing a place for Haley. Thank you that she is with you in no more pain, with no more tears. Thank you that because of the sacrifice and gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that we can all follow Haley into eternity with you. And we thank you for a the gift of knowing Haley. And what a gift. Thank you for giving us someone with skin on so that we could see what it's like to live a life full out for you, to love with abandon, and to live with grace to the very end. We ask that you especially would comfort Taylor and Weston, Lord. We are all now their people. And in the days to come, we commit to loving them, to being part of their lives in really practical ways, to showing your love. Please remind them every day that you're with them. Thank you that this is not how Haley's story ends. That because her life was wrapped up with you, Jesus, here on earth, that her story goes on. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ, amen.